In today's video, I'm going to show you how to convert a uh, three-phase lathe to a single-phase lathe. So you can run it off uh, residential 240. Uh, the motor is going to remain three-phase, run by the VFD on the left. And the uh, VFD on the right is for the coolant motor only. So I'll show you how to wire it, how to program the VFDs, and um, make it compatible for uh, residential use. This schematic shows how the lathe was originally delivered with three input legs, L1, L2, and L3. I'm going to completely remove the uh, components, contactors, wiring, and convert it to L1, L2, single phase, 240 volt for residential use. The way the circuit is wired now is if you look at the very top of the schematic, 240 volts AC, L1 and L2. That feeds a breaker, two-pole breaker. The output of that breaker below and to the right feeds the transformer, which is 220 volt input and 24 volt AC output. There's a fuse in the transformer output that feeds the power lamp, which is the greed indicator on the front of the lathe. It next feeds the work lamp, which has a switch on the work lamp. Um, and then it feeds the coolant switch, which is on the front panel. That coolant switch feeds on the left side, terminal A1 of the C2 contactor. So whenever that coolant switch is on, A1, A2 energized, that turns on the contactor. The L1 and L2, 220 volt, goes through the contactor and powers on the AC drive or the VFD, the Zibidor uh, VFD, which in turn powers on the three phase uh, motor, the coolant motor. The emergency stop switch that powers terminal A1 of contactor C1, which in turn energizes the contactor. It turns on the Malum G70 AC drive or VFD. The output of that feeds the three phase lathe motor for the gearbox. Uh, to the right of the Holum G70, you see there's a jog switch. That's on the front panel. There's a foot brake switch, a hood switch. Uh, those are wired in series so that the jog switch, the forward switch, and the reverse switch, which is the chuck forward and reverse for the chuck, uh, and the jog switch, they will not operate. In other words, the chuck can't be turned unless the foot brake uh, is in its normally closed position when it's up um, and that the hood switch is also closed. So those protections remain. The chuck can't be jogged. It can't be put into forward speed or reverse speed unless those circuits are closed. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, on the Malum G70 AC drive, the COM S1, S2, and S3 are the digital inputs. That's what's, um, that's how the motor is being, the chuck is being engaged, forward, reverse, or jog through the digital interface. And then on the Zibidor, the other VFD, uh, digital input one is tied to ground, and that means that when it's powered on, it's programmed so that it immediately turns the motor on. Uh, and I'll show you later that while it's turned on, the, the VFD is set to zero frequency so that it, uh, it doesn't actually make the coolant flow. Um, so in the case of the Malum VFD, it powers up. It does nothing until it gets an input from one of the switches uh, on the Zibidor AC drive. It actually turns on but doesn't actually command a frequency to the motor. Um, I've done that so that I can just turn the coolant switch on. It's ready to actually 
flow, and then I just rotate the pot potentiometer to uh, make it deliver coolant. So that, that's the circuit in a nutshell. This is how the electrical panel looks on the back of the lathe now. In the center top you have the two pole breaker. Uh, to the right of the breaker is the contactor C1 which uh, feeds the um, Mollum VFD which in turn powers on the lathe motor. To the left of the breaker is contactor C2. It powers the uh, Zibidor VFD which in turn powers the uh, coolant pump motor. This is a three-phase contactor. There's originally four of these installed in the lathe in the three-phase configuration. I'm going to reuse two of the four. Um, the way these work is they have a coil that's energized. This is a 24-volt model, so it's energized by 24 volt across A1 and A2. And when there's 24 volts across A1 and A2, the contacts, this pulls in, this pushes in like that and connects L1 to T1, L2 to T2, and L3 to T3. They also have a connection. This one is a normally closed connection from this junction to that junction. So when it's unpowered, that connection would be closed and conducting. And when it's energized, when this pulls in, uh, this connection would, would not be made anymore. The circuit would be open. So I have two of these normally closed style, the NC. And I have two of the normally open style, and those are the ones I've installed in the, the new circuit. Though it doesn't matter because I'm not actually making any connections across, across these um, anyway. But uh, I'll have two extra, so if there's some problem over time, I can swap out the ones that are in there, and I'll have two extras. So again, when this circuit energizes, when 24 volts is placed across A1 and A2. This pulls in and L1 connects to T1, L2 connects to T2, L3 connects to T3. In my case, I'm not using L3, so this third leg isn't being used. In terms of wiring the VFDs, on the bottom left, there's a green wire that's the ground, the earth ground. Next to that is a black wire, which is L1. To the right of that is another black wire, which is L2. That's 240 volts input power. And then there are four red wires, one going into S1, one going into S2, one going into S3, and uh, one going into COM. So S1 is the forward, chuck forward, switch. The chuck reverse switch connects to S2. Uh, the jog connects, the jog switch connects to S3 and they all reference uh, COM. And then the last three wires on the right, there's a red wire, a black wire, and a green wire. The red wire is phase U for the three phase motor. The black is phase V, and then the green wire is phase W. Okay, to turn on the lathe motor, uh, which is controlled through the large VFD, the one on the left, I'm just going to turn that on. And you can see that the VFD comes up. It's set for 60 hertz. Uh, I'm running at 60 hertz to maintain roughly the uh, speeds that are advertised on the front panel of the lathe, but you can adjust it up or down, but that I just leave at 60 and rely on the, uh, the speeds in the gearbox. 
So first thing I'll show is jog. So I'm going to push the jog button. And uh, I have a program to turn the motor at 5 hertz, which very slowly turns the uh, chuck. Jog, push there. I release it. Once I release it, it goes back to its standby mode to run the, uh, the truck at full speed. So that's 60 hertz. So I have it programmed for an eight second accelerate and eight second decelerate by default. I think it was set at 20 seconds, which is quite slow. So I reprogram that to eight and it will accelerate during that eight second period. So that's forward. Here's reverse. The coolant pump is set off uh, Except from this, so I'll just turn that on. The second VFD comes up. And it controls the coolant pump uh, only. And the fan is on because it's set through this digital connection here. It's digital input one to ground when that's shorted and the unit's programmed to do so, it's, it's in run mode right now. And I just rely on the potentiometer here to set what the frequency I want. So I tend to leave it at zero, it'll go all the way up to 60 hertz. I tend to keep it at zero just because uh, I can control the coolant flow better. So that's how the VFDs uh, function on this unit. This is the 220 volt input. This is the three phases to the motor. And this is the digital input where it's configured and programmed to uh, turn on whenever it's powered. And on this unit, this is the digital input that controls the switches in the front panel and the main um, forward reverse for the chuck. This is ground L1, L2 input and then the three phases to the uh, lathe motor. So that's, uh, that's how these EFDs work. This lamp is also wired to uh, 24 volts AC and uh, it has its own switch and it throws quite a bit of light.